Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to Backyard Buckets. Today, we're going to continue our off-season preview series looking at the Detroit Pistons. Uh, they ended up winning the lottery, getting the number one pick. They're going to look into Cade Cunningham uh, unless they somehow manage to mess that up. We're going to be talking about all that and more later on in today's video. Uh, looking at their off-season guide, they have about $7 million to spend in free agency. As I mentioned, they have the number one overall pick and three second round picks. And a couple of key free agents are Hamadou Diallo and Frank Jackson. Last year, for the most part, the Detroit Pistons were a complete train wreck. Uh, but they did have a few bright spots, one of them being Jeremiah Grant, uh, who was a beast for them this season. Uh, he was big, big surprise coming over from the Denver Nuggets. They also had Killian Hayes. Uh, who did miss some time but looked prom uh, more promising towards the end of the year. Sadiq Bey, uh, who made an all-rookie team coming out of Villanova. He looked like he could be a piece you can build around for years to come, as did Isaiah Stewart, who also made an all-rookie team. A couple of really good draft picks there uh, in the later part of the first round, I believe. Uh, and then Hobbit Diallo, who we just talked about, uh, pending free agent. Now, it was a bad team, but still, he played pretty well, especially that time he dropped like 30-something against the Hornets. Um, they'll probably look to bring him back this offseason. Uh, the Pistons have had some missed opportunities as of late, however. Bruce Brown being one of them. Uh, they traded him off to the Brooklyn Nets at the beginning of the season for basically nothing. As you see here, uh, they gave up Bruce Brown for Musa. I'm not even going to try to say that name. Uh, and a second-round pick. And he became a really, really good player, <laughs> except for the time that he, you know, with KD and Kyrie on the court, thought he could take the last shot. Other than that, he was great for the Nets all year. Really good defensive player. Luke Kennard, another guy that they let walk, who didn't play the greatest at the beginning of the playoffs, but towards the uh, end of the Clippers run, he was much, much better. Uh, they had a chance to bring him back. Didn't make it happen. Uh... Clippers signed him for a four-year, $64 million contract. Uh, it was a three-way trade, though, uh, where the Pistons did get back Sadiq Bay. So not the biggest loss in the world, uh, but the Clippers getting him. And, and going forward, Sadiq Bay, much cheaper contract, so I can see where that one happens. But this one was inexcusable. Losing Christian Wood, who I think is one of the best young bigs in the league. He's got all the potential in the world. They had him, and... They let him walk for a three-year, $41 million deal in Houston. That was mm, that was bad. Uh, sign and trade, Trevor Ariza going back. Uh, they did get the draft rights to Isaiah Stewart and a second-round pick and a heavily protected first-round pick. But still, it's Christian Wood, man. The, the Rockets got an absolute steal. As I mentioned in the Rockets video, He's going to be a beast for years to come, and they'll have all the rights on him now. Yeah, that was that was a missed opportunity. Um, looking at stats here for this year's season, leading the way in scoring this year for the Detroit Pistons was Jeremy Grant. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I think I am, though. Close enough. Uh, he averaged 22 points per game this year as well as five rebounds, three assists, shooting at 43% from the field and 35% from three. Another guy they let walk was, or not walk, but traded away was Derrick Rose, who ended up being the best player on the Knicks team in the playoffs. Uh, Josh Jackson, he did play in 62 games for him this year, where he was actually pretty good. He averaged about 13 points per game, as well as four rebounds and two assists while shooting at 42% from the field. Only 30% from three on about four attempts per game but that can be improved. A bit of a resurgence. He is only 23, uh, did start 25 games, so you never know. He could be coming back. Blake Griffin kind of sold him out. And then they also had good contributions, like I said, from Sadiq Bey, Hamadou Diallo, and guys like Frank Jackson, Isaiah Stewart, Killian Hayes. Those were decent. Looking at their salary cap table, uh, right now they will have a good bit of money uh, in free agency. Although that Blake Griffin contract really, uh, it's not great. As I said earlier, about $7 million to spend this year in free agency. But after uh, this coming season, they will only be uh, 
giving out $51 million. So, and Jeremy Grant will still be on under contract. Uh, Seku will, Isaiah Stewart, Sadiq Bay, Killian Hayes, their draft pick from this year, they will all still be under contract. They'll need to bring back Josh Jackson, as I mentioned, Hamadou Diallo and Frank Jackson, who did play decent roles this year, uh, are free agents, but they should be coming back. Shouldn't take too much money. I mean, they are still younger guys. Uh, Frank Jackson, 22. Sadiq Bey, or Frank Jackson, 23. And Diallo, 22. Uh, so they should be coming back. Looking at their draft options here, it's going to be Cade Cunningham, I think. Um, he's the surefire number one pick. There's no way that the Pistons can mess this up. I mean, if they do trade it, you can still get a guy like uh, Evan Mobley, who is probably the most well-rounded center prospect since, I don't even know. I would say since I've been covering the draft, but this is only the second draft that I've covered. Uh, but Cade, Cade's the number one guy. Um, Evan Mobley, if you didn't want to take him, you'd have to move him and play him around like Isaiah Stewart, you got a young big already. Although he's not the tallest, uh, he's still a beast down low. The, uh, another option you could go was the Jalen Green route, who is just insanely athletic. 6'5", can score the ball whenever, wherever he wants to. Uh, those are really your three options. I don't think Jalen Suggs sneaks up to be the number one overall pick. But, yeah, I think it's going to be Cade Cunningham. Um, it's just insane potential. But... I mean, he could come back in a few years and look at how did Jalen Green not go number one. He's got that kind of potential, but I think it will be Cade Cunningham. Enough of that being said, make sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video at any point. Uh, make sure to come back later. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching.